Hi, I'm Sydney. I'm Jonathan. And this is our van. We got a lot of work to do. Let's go. What's up, guys? Hi. So we are on the road. We are driving. Hey. What? Um, All right, good. What's up, guys? We are on the road, driving down from Washington to Kansas to finish the van. It's been a little bit. We've been working on getting the house ready to sell. It's finally sold, and so we are hitting the road and gonna be working on the van in Kansas at John's dad's house for hopefully not very long, but we're gonna give a lot more updates about what the van looks like now, how we kind of stuffed everything we own what's left of it and all our building materials and everything that's going to go in the van into the van we did a tetrisy type thing to get everything in the van and it's very weighed down by all the lumber and all the building materials so we'll show you that a little bit later but right now we are hitting the road and we should be there in a few days and start working on the van So we already started unpacking some of our things that we put in the van, but as you can see, it is full of everything that we'll need to build the van, but also just to live. Um, John did this really cool uh, hanging support for a lot of the wood panels that were over 12 feet long because they wouldn't fit in long ways, but we've got our batteries and everything back there. Um, we fit everything that we could possibly fit in the van in the van. and traveled across the country with it. Now we're unloading. Got the pups working on the van. Got the pups. We got some stuff done before we left the house and it consisted of mainly doing insulation and some other little bits and pieces. So the next little bit is just kind of the videos from that time when we were working on the van before we started working on getting the house ready to sell. So the next little bit is mainly just the insulation and stuff like that. Um, clips from before we left for Kansas. We got our insulation. We went with Havelock Wool, which is just wool. It's a US-based company designed specifically for van life. They're based out of Nevada and their insulation has an R value of seven, which is really ideal for van life. And we don't have to have any protective gear to install it. It's just wool. It doesn't have any fiberglass or any, anything dangerous in it. So we can touch it, pull it apart, and it's safe to use, it's safe for pets. It has a really high insulation factor, so it keeps cool in the hot months and keeps it nice and warm in the cold months. 
um, and it's good for moisture protection and whatnot because it's just wool. So we went with that because it was highly recommended for van life and it's easy to use. We're just gonna use some of these bigger bats like this and we're gonna cut them and put them on the panels of the walls and kind of stick them on there with some with some uh, adhesive and then the little crevices, you just tear off little, little puffs like this, form them into whatever consistency that you need and put them in the crevices. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Making some wheel oil boxes for you. You want to taste? Ew. You don't want to taste it? No. All right. Oh, yes. I'm going to put two pocket holes in the bottom of both these and put a couple pocket holes across the bottom there and then put pocket holes to screw into this wall. We're going to put some great stuff insulation in it and then we're going to put a top on it so that we can stay warm or cool or whichever one we're trying to do.
today we're going to be working on pre-wiring. Pre-wiring the electrical. Uh, and then we want to re-sand and water guard our floor because it got a little beat up on the way here from uh, Washington. We're in Kansas now. And my dad's trying to finish it up. But the floor is a little beat up, so we're gonna re-sand it, water guard it, and then we're gonna put the vinyl down. Just put it down before everything so we don't have to work around it. We can just kind of, you know, look flush with the cabinets and the benches, so. Originally, we were gonna put it down closer to the end uh, after we'd already got the cabinets in, but. We change things a lot. We change our minds all the time. We also need to finish up the framework, which I feel like we've said in the last three videos. <laughs> I think the electrical is going to be the hardest part of today. It may take up the whole day anyway, so we'll see how, see how we do. All right. Are you ready to measure the wires? Yeah. What's your problem? You got issues, lady. Would you like me to explain it? Yeah. Okay. Well, did you stop pounding if I explain it? Yes. And start having fun again? Yes. Well, come over here. Explain it to you, friend. Why my bees back? No. <laughs> anyway, so we need to start running wires from this hole right there, because that is where the electrical is going to be. We're going to run wires all through this wall. I'm going to run the wire that's going to connect to the LED light that's going to be in the shower. I'm going to run the uh, wire through this. Uh, we'll put these in here. These little plastic tunnels. I know they have a real name, I just don't know what they're called. To protect them from the metal while we're bouncing around, driving around, the wires are naturally going to bounce around too. So we're going to run it through there. We're going to run across here. I'm just going to I'm going to tape it because once there's a ceiling, it's just going to sit there anyway. Uh, the puck light will be right here over the shower, which we will then run to its own separate switch. And then I'm going to run a wire shorter because I'm gonna we're gonna put in what we discussed briefly last night we're gonna put in a single row of puck lights down the middle of the van because we're also gonna have floor lights and any other like little lamps USB lanterns or whatever that we want on the edge so I think a single row of LED lights would be just fine if not we could put some under the cabinets but that'll be easy because then you can just straight run from the wire to the cabinets with the electrical beam right there that's what we're going to do now. We're going to measure out these wires. We're going to run them across this whole thing. We need that little entrance to dry. we will be covered in silicone. It's not pretty, but it's going to do the job. And it's going to be hidden behind a wall. So as long as it uh, protects the wire, then that's all I care about. But that's what we're about to do now. We are using a 12-gauge uh, wire for negative and positive ends for the puck lights. It is way more than you need just to run a couple of measly puck lights, but there is zero chance this is gonna overheat running these. And honestly, I just wanna put the best stuff in here. And that's DC power? Uh, yeah, and most most campers use 14 gauge. 14 gauge is really all you need. I'm just playing it safe by using 12 gauge wire. So it's gonna get the same job done. It's not gonna get hot, it's not gonna overheat, and uh, we shouldn't have a problem with it. It'll last longer. And so the tubing that we're using, to protect the wire comes in really long spools of this and it's already pre pre cut right, down the middle so it's easy to put the wire through without having to like feed it through the whole thing and then we're putting it around the little holes kind of like that obviously cut 
so that it doesn't scrape up against any of the of the metal. But now we're just gonna measure the wire. We got our AC wire, which is obviously two things. Our DC wire, these aren't set up yet because our boxes aren't set up, but they are cut to length. This is our middle midstream main cam cut lights. Probably gonna just run one more wire. Just in case. Just in case we want to add anything else and we've already put up the walls, we can just pull the wire up. But that's pretty much it. We haven't ran the wires through the hole because it was drying. So we're gonna go through and do that now. We've got our AC power. So we decided on doing two sets of outlets, one on this end where part of the kitchen is gonna be, and then one on this end where the fridge is gonna be, and another outlet. We have two sets of outlets. We didn't feel we needed more than that because we're gonna have a jackery and possibly a second jackery that we can plug our phones and electronics into any other time. Um, we have our DC power, which we have it pre-wired for the fan and then for our puck lights. So they're kind of just dangling right now, but it's just pre-wiring. And then those are still our solar panel cables. And then we have all the cables coming through a hole that we made and then another hole that's gonna lead straight to the batteries. So we have the shower hookup. So that's following this line across. Again, this is just pre-wiring, so it's not going to look like this um, for the shower. And then I think that's pretty much it. The fans and the puck lights. And then, oh, and then the fridge. So that's pretty much it for our pre-wiring. We've got all that ready to go whenever we start the actual bulk of the electrical. But that's, that's what they look like. So that's been our journey from the beginning of July until now with working on the van, getting the house ready to sell, moving across the country. Um, we took a bit of a break from working on the van just because we had so much to do with the house 
and both of us separating from the military and just a lot of loose ends to tie up before we moved. On our way from Washington, we stopped in Boise to visit a friend and then stopped in Evanston and Denver and then finally made our way to Kansas. So only about like six hour day drives. It didn't take too long to get here. And now we're working on the van and should have a lot more, a lot faster updates in the near future. We are so fortunate to be staying with John's dad who has been letting us use his garage and his workshop and is full of knowledge. So he's been so, so helpful in terms of the next little bit of the, the van build. So we're really looking forward to working with him and getting some of this finished, but he has been very, very helpful. And we're really, really lucky and really, really grateful that he was kind enough to let us stay with him and work on the van and take over his whole garage pretty much because there's a lot of stuff. But we're really happy that we're starting van life really soon and that we're getting really close to being done with the van and able to really start van life full time. So yeah, as always, thanks for watching and thanks for supporting us on our journey and stay tuned for more.